Oh, hey, GITV, what's up? I guess we're doing the tactical gear hits today, but, uh, why don't we take a look at the GI Crypt? Come on in. Alright, well, this is actually where uh, a lot of the magic happens, so to speak. Alright, so this is my workstation. This is where I do a lot of my typing into like Facebook, uh, YouTube comments, blogtv.com, which is our new live show every Tuesday from about 6 to 7 p.m. We're also on, I believe, Google Plus, among other things, and Instagram. But on the other side of this monitor is my neighbor, or as I like to call my crew, Aaron Chewy Zitch. All right, so why don't we head back to the studio because I've got all of my gear from Tim vs. Bob 3 right there. Let's go check it out. All right, so this is the door to the studio right here, and as you can see, filming is in progress, but don't worry, that's us. All right, so as you can tell, I've got everything but the kitchen sink out here, which is basically everything I took the Tim vs. Bob 3 onto the field. And I've got a lot to cover, so I'm gonna take a seat. Why don't you do that as well? And we'll get this tactical gear heads rolling. All right, so you guys comfortable? I am, and we certainly have a lot of stuff to go over, so why don't we just get started? All right, so here's the body armor I was wearing. This is a Garter Cyraz, and that stands for Combat Integrated Releasable Armor System. You'll notice near the top, there is actually a little pull tab here. If you pull that, it's actually gonna have release the entire body armor system off your body. It's just gonna fall apart. Everything is connected in the back by a series of cables. Uh, and this is the maritime version, which is why the tab is at the top. There are other land versions, land warfare versions, where they're on the side, uh, either side. Uh, but yeah, this is a great vest. It's very heavy, very cool looking. I bought it so many years ago, and after I bought it, I didn't have a whole lot of extra money to splurge on pouches. So I actually uh, got a lot of Condor pouches because the price point is just right for me. It's not too expensive and I can get a lot of stuff for not as much money. Um, this has lasted quite a few years. Uh, I've got a double mag pistol pouch. Uh, this is actually, that was one for my 1911 mag, one for my KSC G17 mag. Uh, I also had three magazine pouches down here that are made by Condor where I was carrying these uh, rubber hand grenades with uh, the pull, uh, pull tab streamer. Uh, that's to activate it. And I also had one Airsoft Innovations Tornado Impact Grenade. Um, now, <laughs> that's actually a bit more than was allowed by the rules. You're only supposed to have two grenades, but I figured I was a commander, I could stretch that a little bit, and Tim breaks the rules, so I thought it was fine. Um, rationalizations aside, <laughs> I had another uh, M4, double M4 mag pouch with two shotgun shell holsters, or shotgun shell holders right there. That's actually a tactical tailor mag pouch I've had for many, many years. Great company as well. Uh, I also have an admin pouch here with my American flag, my Tim vs. Bob 3, the return of the X-Man patch, which you could only get if you went to Tim vs. Bob 3. I also have an IFF American flag patch. I don't feel right unless I have at least one to two American flags on me at any given time. Uh, I also have a Magpul PTS MS2 sling. I really like this. It's very good to, uh, uh, I guess it's just very comfortable and very easy to use with just about any gun I own. Uh, now I'm gonna proceed around here to the left side. I've got my uh, Nerf Kill Tomahawk, basically my Nerf Tomahawk here. I put it in between the body armor and my person because it's a lot easier to get that out at short notice and kill someone than it is to unsling my axe out of the shotgun scabbard. I actually got one kill on a guy who had his 240 Bravo sticking out of a window. I was pretty happy with that. I also have a utility pouch right here in which I was carrying extra gas. An extra battery for AR Drone 2.0, which I'll get into later. And I also had a bag of KSC, or excuse me, KWA 0.25 gram Perfect BBs. Big fans of these, they work very well with my KSC guns, or, oh geez, KWA guns, hmm, for shame. Uh, we also have a radio pouch right here where it's carrying my Motorola Talkabout. Uh, very handy to have radios, especially for that big of a game. It was absolutely necessary. And in that same vein, I actually wore uh, the Bravo headset uh, for Motorola one-pin radios. I really like this. I wore it on Tim vs. Bob the beginning, GI original short film. I had to wear it for Tim vs. Bob 3, and it came in very handy and was very effective. I also have a Condor hydration carrier, and this is actually a name strip with my old team handle on it, Joker. I was... Still am a very funny gentleman. Uh, but yeah, I had a I have a camel back in here. I had it filled with water, emptied almost the entire thing after the first game. Uh, we also have a Condor tactical shotgun scabbard where I'm carrying my Bob the Axe Man signature axe. 
Uh, now I actually put it facing up so I could use it as a battle standard so everyone would know where I was. I was going to face it down so I could discreetly draw my axe, but on the advice of some of my teammates and my, uh, I guess, the command elements, they decided it would be better to know exactly where I was. Now, moving around further to the right side of my gear, I have a G-Code holster for my ATP, which actually still fits uh, my KSC G17. This is one of the first airsoft guns I ever owned, and I thought it was very fitting to carry it out to the battlefield to fight against him. Now, further on, we also have a carabiner. I find these are almost always useful in the field of battle, so I usually have one of my gear at any given time. Um, I think that's just about everything for uh, this vest. The only thing that I neglected to mention is the fact that I had Big Lead Chew, uh, I believe, Sour Apple inside this admin pouch. It's very important for me to have gum at just about every event I'm at. I just really like gum, and Big League Chew is probably my favorite. All right, now, further on, I've got my Massif hat. I got this hat at SHOT Show. Massif is a great company. I, think, I believe they make real steel, uh, uh, I guess, uh, tactical apparel. Um, one thing I really like about their hats is that at SHOT Show, they're free, but also, on uh, the back, there is no, I guess, um, negative area or open area where you can get shot in the front of the head if you wear it backwards. That's why I like wearing this hat. And you'll notice uh, it was pretty hot out there, so there's a lot of sweat. I sweat pretty profusely on hot days and basically every time I airsoft. Now, next up is my JT Flex 8 mask. Uh, I have been using this thing for, geez, over 12 years, and it has never failed me once, but at Tim vs. Bob 3, it cracked. Um, definitely in the market for a new mask, even though I love this one, I, I'm going to need to get a new one. I noticed Tim is using a Dye 4 mask. I really like the Dye mask. I mean, I, I'd be kind of nice to have one. Send me one to use! Or, or, you know, maybe just have a sample to use in a game that I could use in a game and show on GITV cough. Um, anyway, so definitely in the market for a new face mask. Uh, now, further on, I'm actually using a Condor dump pouch. Big fan of dump pouches because I go through a lot of mags rather swiftly or other material. Um, I also have a Pantech USA weapons catch with my Minnesota Airsofters Association. That's upside, oh, that's right side up. Minnesota Airsofters Association patch on it from Bob and Tim's store in the Midwest. I really like these weapons catches because when I run out of mags with my, my KMP9, my AK-47, or even the Galil, I can stow the weapon in this and run around using my pistol without any real problems. Now, I mounted both the dump pouch and the weapons catch on my regular reversible belt that I bought at, I believe, Target. Now, uh, I meant to bring out my Condor's rigor, Condor Riggers belt, uh, but when I was inventorying all my stuff, there were a couple things I just forgot to put in my car. My Riggers belt was one of them, but this worked out pretty well in the game. Uh, didn't really have my pants fall down, which is always a plus. Um, I'm just gonna toss that to the side. But in that same vein, I actually also forgot to inventory my Condor Elite boots. So, because I keep boots, belts, and basically duct tape my car at any given time. I was lucky enough to have my old army boots. Well, I wasn't in the army, they're just old army boots. Uh, had them in my car, used them that day, worked out uh, just right. Next up, I also have my Mechanics Impact 2012 gloves. Um, I haven't bought gloves in a long time, but I bought these a little while ago, and I'm completely, completely happy with my purchase. Very comfortable gloves, not too expensive, and very functional, which is what I appreciate probably the most. Um, now, I believe that is just about all the gear I can think of, except for the clothing I was wearing. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm wearing an Under Armour Airsoft GI polo that is actually the same polo I wore on the battlefield for Tim vs. Bob 3. The only other thing I wore that I should make you aware of are my True Spec 24-7 pants. I actually bought them right here from GI. I really like these pants. There's so many pockets. I've never been able to use them all at once, which is just really my problem more than anything. Uh, but my favorite part about them is that they have inserts for the knees, which I put neoprene pads inside so I don't have to wear knee pads and I can get down on my knees in the middle of a battlefield without having to worry. And the, the other great thing about that is unlike knee pads, the, uh, the actual knee preem pads will not move up and down on your person. They will stay in the same spot every time. So I highly suggest True Spec 24-7 pants. I wear khakis. Um, that's just what I prefer. Uh, now, one thing I should mention uh, before we move on is, well, basically this is the first time we got to use our AR drone, AR Parrot Drone 2.0 on the battlefield. If you guys haven't seen this before, this is basically a mini UAV. Uh, these are purchasable, I believe, at Barnes Noble or Borders or uh, you know any other, I guess, tech store. Um, it's got a 720 HD camera on the front pointing forward and slightly down, and it's got a 640 by 480 camera on the bottom pointing straight down. You can even control this with an iPad, which is what I brought out to the battlefield, or you can use your Droid phone, your iPhone, uh, any of those, and you can control it right from your phone and record it right there. Now, we'd originally planned to 
use that as a periscope to, periscope to head through, uh, I guess, the canopy of the trees just to get a really good view of the battlefield to decide where to send my forces or where to reinforce places. I'd also thought about maybe having it follow me around the battlefield to collect good footage, so I kind of wanted it to look like this. It shares to X-Men. We're 40 elite guards heading to Faceline. Charlie, do you copy? Copy. UAV on standby. UAV online. Right? But it ended up more looking like this. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Yeah, so the Aero Drone 2.0 wasn't really combat effective, but it was definitely a new thing we added to the battlefield to just try something else out. And we're going to definitely make some uh, uh, modifications and see what else we can do to make it more effective. Uh, but I'm just glad we're trying new things with new toys. So uh, we're going to take a quick break right now for a commercial, but when we get back, we're going to go over all the guns I used for Tim vs. Bob 3. So stay tuned. Alright, so we're back. Before I get to the guns like I promised, uh, I actually want to go over one last thing. Um, because there were tribes on the battlefield, two to be specific, I believe Umbrella and Threat Tribe, uh, I was worried about having to negotiate with them, so I brought some things that I could use to negotiate uh, in past Milsim operations, like Operation Lion Claws. I've noticed that candy works out pretty well. So I had a big bag of Dum Dums, I had a big bag of Nerds, I had a big bag of Tootsie Pops, I had one other bag of something. Uh, but because I knew the tribes were also partially educated, I brought some modern literature, which usually seems to work out well at Milsim operations. It worked out kind of well, but uh, yeah, both Tim and I were both, both of our teams were getting um, uh, screwed with by the tribe. So, on to the guns. First, I have my handy dandy tried and true and trusted KWA KMP9. Love this gun. I play with it a lot. Uh, in airsoft, um, but that said, I've got a flashlight attached to the uh, rails on the right side, a pressure switch duct tape to the front foregrip. Uh, I also have a very old uh, mock suppressor I bought when I first got into airsoft. I also have a DangerWorks threaded barrel, which is really nice, allows me to attach the mock suppressor and make the gun look cooler. I also have a DangerWorks uh, uh, fluted barrel or um, what is that? DangerWorks flute valve, excuse me. Uh, it makes it very uh, handy and pushes this gun's FPS all the way down to below 350, which makes it, makes it viable for CQB, which I really like. Uh, now, in the back, I also uh, made my own duct tape sling attachment point. Duct tape is a great thing. It's probably your best friend next to your dog. I've made belts out of it. Uh, you can actually, well, I'm not going to mention all the things you can do with it, but making a sling attachment point is definitely one of them. Next up is my Israeli Weapon Industries, or IWI, Galil. I use this at Tim vs. Bob Storm of the Midwest. I'm a big fan of this after using it at that game. really like Galil's, and I really like the folding stock. I only had one high-capacity mag with me, so I only used it at certain parts of the first game. Uh, now, for the third game, I switched to my very old but very... Uh, well, now trustworthy, Tokyo Marui AK-47. I bought this a long time ago, and it was not functional until I gave it to one of the Airsoft GI techs by the name of Aaron the Chops Mora. Now, like I said, it was not functional. He replaced a lot of stuff on very short notice. It only took him a day, and this gun works like a dream. I actually also borrowed a drum mag from James at the sales floor. Um, it works very well. You push this button to wind it up. Um, I don't know, I, ha I have really no complaints. I used a lipo on this thing. I was just shocked at how incredibly perfectly it performed. So yeah, I was able to carry 2,500 rounds in this thing. Never ran out of ammo. I actually ran out of batteries before I ran out of ammo. So big fan of that. Now, uh, in the same vein as my KWA KMP9, I also got a piece of tactical gear for that gun to hold my magazines. This is a G-Code RTI dual MP9 mag holster. Now, what's crazy about this is that this was uh, maybe custom made by Jesse Lockhart at G-Code for Bob vs. Tim 3 
for me, basically. Um, there's only one other one of these, and I believe Jesse Lockhart owns it because I believe he uses a, a KWA KMP9 as well. And you've got the little logo from G-Code on there. looks really cool. They even sort of did a little camo paint job. And I really like how how much higher this rides on my thigh because it makes it a lot easier to transition mags. So I really love G-Code stuff and that's definitely the newest addition and probably my favorite right now. Next up, I had my RTI 1911 rig. Uh, basically it's an RTI thigh rig. Uh, you can put just about any holster on here. So I put my 1911 holster on here and I've got my KWA Mark II 1911 or 1911 Mark II. Really like this pistol, really like 1911s. This performed flawlessly, and I used it quite a bit. Um, now for the MP9, I only used three mags. For the uh, this 1911, I only had the mag in the gun and an extra mag. Um, now for this, like I mentioned er earlier, the Galil only had one high capacity mag. And for the uh, AK-47, the TM AK-47, all I had was that drum mag. Uh, so I was basically just putting these guns on a table, except for the sidearms, and just switching back and forth as I saw fit. Now, uh, the only other gun I had in my person was my KSC G17, one of the oldest guns in my inventory. In fact, there's only one older that I have. Uh, it worked very well, I was very happy to have it, but honestly, I'm really kind of just in the 1911 mood nowadays. So yeah, that's all the stuff I have for Tim vs. Bob 3. It's, it's really m more stuff than I thought when it's on the table in front of you. I definitely really want to weigh this, this set of armor because it's probably pretty heavy with a lot of crap in it. But uh, you know, anyway, I got you know I got a lot of reviews to do. I got an after action report to take care of and some emails to uh, send out. So uh, got to get you guys to skedaddle right now. But uh, you know, thank you for coming in. Really appreciate it. And if you guys got some free time, make sure to check out our other channel, GITV Uncut. It's got a lot of crazy videos you wouldn't expect from us. Make sure to check it out. But love you guys. Thanks for stopping by. Goodbye. Bye. -bye.